Um, my name is Eric Tweedy from uh, Shavertown, Pennsylvania. Uh, thanks again for uh, another great meeting. Um, uh, during last year's meeting, my wife picked up uh, a copy of uh, a book called Buffetology at uh, one of the shops around town. Uh, that uh, is written by uh, Mr. Buffett's uh, former daughter-in-law. Uh, a very well-written uh, book, very interesting, and it uh, attempts to outline the, the Warren Buffett approach to investing. Uh, my question is, I don't know if either of you gentlemen are familiar with the content or have read it, and if so, if you could comment uh, on uh, if you think it is a, a good outline of uh, that type of investing. Um, sec my second question related to that, um, uh, I wonder if, you, if uh, Mr. Buffett could comment on why you bought the original textile mill in Massachusetts, and if that represented an earlier phase when you were more of a, st a strictly Graham style value investor versus your current investment style. Probably the best, um, I, would, I would say that the, the, the most representative book on my views is the one that Laurie Cunningham has put together because he essentially has taken my words and rearranged them in a more or he's taken them from a number of years. And, and what, what, he, what he has put together there best represents my views. That, um, uh, and we've got 20 years of annual reports or so or more on the internet plus articles in Fortune, all kinds of things. So uh, it's probably a, uh, a bias I have, but I would I like to think that I laid out those views as uh, better than somebody who's rewriting them. But that, that's I'll let you make that decision. Uh, uh, but I, 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 I do think Larry's done a very good job of uh, of taking a number of those reports and and rearranging them by topic. Uh, uh, in a way that makes it a lot easier to read than trying to go through year after year. And uh, actually, you'll have this book about Charlie pretty soon to read, too. But we, we've said what we've said in these meetings, we've said in the annual reports, we've said exactly what we do. And some of the books, I would say, try to take that and because people are looking for mechanistic things or formulas or whatever it may be, they they try to hold they may try to hold out that there's a some secret beyond that, but I, I, I don't think there, there probably is. And Charlie? You've read the books. <laughs> well, I skimmed uh, <laughs> that book. <laughs> the, uh, I think what we have done all these years is it wasn't all that hard to do, and it, it's not all that hard to explain. All that said and done, I think a lot of people just don't get it. <laughs> As Samuel Johnson said famously, I can give you an argument, but I can't give you an understanding. Mm. <laughs> what was the second part again? <laughs> I, I just uh, asked you uh, if, if you could maybe comment on why you bought the original uh, oh. Berkshire Textile Home. <laughs> That's why I didn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> If I could say it one was, of the things, someone tapped me on the shoulder and asked me for, for you not to forget to give the current year's recommended books. <laughs> it's, it's, I got to recommend the book on Charlie. The, uh, but I'll let Charlie recommend one too. The, the original purchase of Berkshire was a, was a terrible mistake, uh, and my mistake. Uh, no one, uh, no one pushed me into it. It was uh, I bought it because it was what we used to call or. The cigar, it was a cigar but approach to investing where we would look around for something with a free puff left in it. You know, it was soggy and kind of disgusting and everything, but it was free. And Berkshire was selling below working capital, had a history of repurchasing shares periodically on tender offers, and it was selling it. First purchase was, I think, at seven and a half dollars a share. In fact, I've got the, I've got the broker's ticket up in the office, 2,000 shares. And uh, they, it looked to me like they were going to have a tender offer periodically, and there would probably be at some figure closer to working that working capital, which might have been 11 or $12 a share, some, some such number, and we would sell on the tender. And that was, uh, we had other securities we owned that way, and we bought some that way. And then, actually, I met um, C. Barry Stanton one time, who was running Berkshire, and, and uh, 
he told me and made me an insider so I couldn't do anything, but he, he, he said he was thinking of having a tender and he was wondered what price we'd tender at. And I, as I remember, I, I may be wrong on this, I could look back on it, but I think I said 11 and 3 eighths. And, he's, and, he, and he said again to me, well, if we have a tender at 11 and 3 eighths, will you tender? And I said, yes, I will. And, uh, uh, and then I was frozen out, obviously, of doing anything in the stock for a little while, but then he came along with the tender offer. and. I, as I remember, I opened the envelope and it was 11 and a quarter. I may be wrong. It may have been 11 and a half, 11 and three eighths, but it was an eighth below what what he had said to me and what I'd agreed to. So I found that kind of irritating, and uh, I didn't tender. And then I bought a lot of stock, and I bought um, Kim Chase, who's a director. His his father uh, 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 had some members of the family, not his direct family, but a related family that wanted to sell a block and we bought several blocks and before long we controlled the company uh, so at an eighth of a point difference we wouldn't have bought it uh, the company if they'd actually tendered at that price we had a somewhat similar thing happen with blue chip actually later on too now it would have been, we would have been much better off if we hadn't bought it because then things like national indemnity and all of that instead of buying it into a public company with a great many other shareholders we would have bought it privately in the partnership and our partners would have had a greater interest so Berkshire was exactly the wrong vehicle to use for buying a bunch of wonderful companies over time but I sort of stumbled into it and we kept moving along and when I disbanded the partnership I distributed out the Berkshire because it seemed like the easiest and best thing to do and I followed through on it, and, and I enjoyed it enormously. I'm glad it all worked out this way. It did not work out the best way economically, in all probability. Um, it was it was a it was a, the wrong base to use to build uh, an enterprise around. But maybe in a way that's made it more fun. Charlie, do you have any uh, thing to add on that? You can tell them about the blue chip story. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, one such story is enough. <laughs> but. It is interesting that uh, a wrong decision has been made to work out so well. Uh, we've done a lot of that, scrambled out of wrong decisions. I'd argue that's a big part of having a reasonable record in life. You can't avoid the wrong decisions, but if you recognize them promptly and do something about them, uh, you... Uh, you can frequently turn the lemon into lemonade, which is what happened here. Warren twisted a lot of capital out of the uh, textile business and invested it wisely, and that's why we're all here. But Berkshire comes from three companies that came together, Diversified Retailing, Blue Chip Stamps, and Berkshire. Uh, those were the three base companies, and Diversified started when we bought a company called Hoshul Cohn in, in, in Baltimore in 1966, a department store, and that company disappeared over time. Fortunately, in 19, I think it's 70, we sold it to Supermarkets General. Blue Chimp, we've told you about the record of that, so we started out with three disasters and put them all together, <laughs> and it's worked out pretty well, but it, 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 it it was a mistake to be working from that kind of a base. Don't don't follow our example in that respect. Start out with a good business and then keep adding on good businesses. But, now, the, but yeah. the example of, of quickly identifying the mistakes and taking action, there are example is a good one. Yeah.